Their version would have had Schumer's character be an ambitious inventor within Barbie Land. However, the producers wanted her to invent something like high heels made of jello. And Schumer was like, what? Why? Like, why that, right? Because we can sell them. She wanted to make something feminist and cool, and they didn't. The choice is now yours. The first one. The high heel. And some weirdo at Mattel or Sony or whatever had a foot fetish. And she was just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't. I'm out. I just want to put my feet in jello. That's probably, ew, that's probably what it was. Like some weirdo who's just like, yeah, I want to watch the jello squish between your toes. Ooh. Some fucking weirdo. Look, I did a proof of concept film just in my home. I want to show you. Uh, you see how that one really sticks to your feet? Yeah. Well, listen, to, listen to that squish, squish noise. noise. <laughs> this is my ASMR. <laughs> Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world where big egos, bigger budgets, and just plain bad luck can make things go horribly wrong. And we're going behind the scenes of these disastrous, never-ending, and often dangerous productions to find out why it was a shit show. Hi, Barbies. Hi, Hi Barbie. <laughs> uh, this is It Was a Shit Show. My name's Ian, joined as always by Clint. Hello. And Ray. Hello. I didn't want to put us in too many I was like, we don't boxes. get Barbie names. Barbie names. Like, like I'm not I like mean, Midge and he's not Alan. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't want to call Clint the Alan. <laughs> I, I mean, would, you I are would, definitely the Alan I of would, the podcast. I would fucking love to be Alan. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to jump on that bandwagon and talk about the biggest film of right now, which is Barbie. Ooh. Full disclosure for anyone new here, this will not be a podcast about bashing the film. This won't be part of the fake outrage, uh, it's so woke bullshit, okay? Everyone here, I can assume, mm -hmm. enjoyed the film. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this will be, however, about the development hell that the film fell into before actually being produced. That is the shit show. Uh, so today, let's talk Barbie. You were originally slated to star in the Barbie movie. You, you dropped out due to creative differences. They said I was too thin. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Can you name a specific reason you dropped out and will you be seeing the movie? I can't wait to see the movie. I think it looks awesome. Um, I think we said it was scheduling conflict. Okay, that's what we said. That's what we said. But yeah, it really was just like creative differences. But I, you know, there's like a new team behind it and it, it looks like it's like very feminist and cool. So I will be seeing that movie. Was it that it didn't feel feminist and cool when you were involved in it? It was yeah. a little, yes, yeah. right. Okay, again, if you are new to the podcast, we do a short segment, very short about Clint's closet, <laughs> oh, <laughs> where, yeah, yeah. where Clint brings something from his vault of kids' toys, figurines, memorabilia, 3D printed objects, and all sorts of other junk he should probably throw out. Um, <laughs> yeah, you ain't kidding. I'm looking, I'm looking at my stuff I'm like, God, I've got a lot of stuff. I have no idea where to put it. But then I look online like, I'm going to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to add to this. Yep. But seeing as how today's about Barbie, I'm really interested in what you have in store for us. Well, I thought about bringing some of my, my kids' toys, my kids' Barbies, because mm -hmm. they play with Barbies, right? And I did actually, as a child, have a Ken doll, but he was in uh, a tuxedo, and I played with him as though he was James Bond, <laughs> right? <laughs> but after the Barbie movie came out and we loved it so much, uh, I decided to go to Mattel.com and buy some stuff. <laughs> So <laughs> I bought myself, because I am a patch collector, so I bought myself a Barbie patch, Ooh, which is a really, you know, classic. final thing. And for Christmas, I bought my wife a reproduction of the original Midge doll, because Lisa loved Midge. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but the other thing I have is my Barbie, my Barbie underwear. I have, <laughs> I have Barbie underwear. Picks or it didn't happen. All right, all right, here we go. <laughs> right. Oh, God. Can we get the zipping sound on here? <laughs> yeah. Cute. Wait, is that from the new movie? Yeah, these are my MeUndies. Okay, oh. so they're... should we have MeUndies sponsor us? Like, let's get. <laughs> yeah, so there's my Clint's. Uh, Clint's underwear brought to you by MeUndies. Yeah, I, d I did not I need to have your dick hanging out in the middle of that. <laughs> no one ever does. But, uh... He always buys the thong cut. Like, it's just it just makes it really awkward. For so I should have shaved before I apologize. Yeah, 
It's just like, you know, they sell like boxer briefs <laughs> on the undies. <laughs> Yeah, at what point is that even helping? <laughs> it feels nice. <laughs> you got to well, have your cheeks free. Well, yeah. that's very cool. I I thought I thought for sure you were going to just bring a shit ton of Barbies. Uh, Barbies. I should have. I have my my, but my those daughters. But those are actually yours. Those, these, yeah, these yeah, are mine. So the, patch, versus... the patch and the underwear are mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope they're your underwear. Yeah, well, as I was going through like my underwear drawer, I was like, Okay, I gotta make sure that I grab mine and not Lisa's because we get matching we get matching me undies. So I gotta make sure I grab mine and not hers. Oh my god, that's so cute. You nerds. Uh, right? Um oh that's why you were wearing the thong cut. Is that you accidentally yeah, I accidentally yeah, grabbed Lisa's. Lisa's. <laughs> so let's start. Uh development on the Barbie movie only began in two thousand and nine with Mattel signing a deal with Universal Pictures. I'm so surprised that it took that long. Yeah, right. Like with be- with Barbie being as popular as it has been for so many decades. Well, like okay. they've made a bunch of Barbie shows, though, haven't they? Like animated TV shows and stuff. True. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> so oh, why make why make a Barbie movie? Yeah. So this is before big hits like Trolls and the Lego Movie, mm-hmm. but it was two years after the enormous success of Hasbro's transformers transformers movie <laughs> michael bay so uh and according to mattel barbie has a 99 percent worldwide brand awareness and it is hmm. the number one girl's property in the toy industry oh. uh and so but they also <laughs> made 16 direct to video movies selling a total of 75 million copies the first one in 2001 was Barbie in the Nutcracker, and it made $150 million alone. Wow. Wow, yeah. So that is what you're saying. It's like, yeah. yeah, they made a bunch of these kinds of things, and so why not bring it to the big screen? But as for a plot for this movie, Mattel said, um, quote, uh, there are no shortage of plot possibilities since Barbie has held more than 120 jobs over the years. Mm. Yes, yes. So nothing comes out of this deal. And that's when they, they brokered in 2009. And in April of 2014, uh, they're kind of, Mattel's free to do what they want. And so they asked some producers and, and writers to come pitch their ideas on how they'd make a Barbie movie. Just, hey, who's got the best idea and we'll, we'll right. go with you, right? So two producers, husband and wife team Walter Parks and Lori McDonald's, um, met with screenwriter Jenny Bix. And she did. She wrote on Sex and the City, uh, The Big C. And she pitches a modern day Mary Poppins story where Barbie uses, quote, her personal and professional skills to step into the lives of others and improve them. Yeah, okay, I could see that. Yeah, kind of like a. Uh, uh, that... Mary Poppins? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was it say? Well, it's that reality show, that, that nanny. Oh, yeah, like Nanny 911. Yeah. And those, yeah. All those other ones. Yeah. yeah like, yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, just Mary Poppins. <laughs> I love that, though. Her... Yeah. <laughs> Her personal and professional skills. And it's just like, what is that? What uh, does that mean? 120 jobs. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I mean, she can. Which t- just looks really shitty on a resume because right. you're looking at her going, uh, how long did you stay uh, a lawyer? A veterinarian. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, and then you transition to an astronaut, you say? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, so you're a painter. <laughs> <laughs> and a mechanic. <laughs> and a doctor. And you held these jobs for weeks. <laughs> Uh, so they for also... the attention span of a child, yeah. which is five minutes. Yeah, for the first quarter of 1997. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Until until I, I, would, I deemed my job not popular yeah. among children. <laughs> <laughs> so they also were going to cast a bunch of young unknowns and build it into an MCU-like universe. All these Barbie movies, okay? So Mattel loves the idea, gives them the rights, and Sony immediately partners with them to make the film. And they, okay, this is 2014, April 2014, and they're going to start filming by the end of the year. Spoiler alert, this doesn't happen. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So by March 2015, the producers hire Diablo Cody Mm. to do a rewrite. This raised some eyebrows because... Not only is like Cody a very vocal stripper turned Oscar winning screenwriter, but most of her films are more edgy, edgy and, yeah. and, and was serious. The, was this like right around the time when like Juno was really big? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, um, yeah. 
So, well, this is after Juno. This was like when she was doing um, like young adult and oh, okay. Tully and stuff like that. Okay, okay. So, um, and so it's not what you'd expect from a Barbie movie. Um, but this is. Yeah, I don't remember Stripper being one of her jobs. <laughs> Barbie, look, listen, Barbie can do whatever she wants. No, I'm not, yeah. I'm not shaming And most her. of the kids made her, made, him, made her stripper anyway. That's yeah, true. I know. Yeah, right. Like, I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying anything bad. I, I'm saying, I just don't remember that. I remember the marketing ads for that. Uh, <laughs> stripper Barbie. She has the Barbie. heels for it. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is producer Walter Parks um, about hiring Diablo Cody. Diablo's unconventionality is just what Barbie needs. It signals we're going for a legitimately contemporary tone. We're bringing her on because she has great ideas, but even more importantly, she truly loves Barbie. Yeah, she played with um, Barbies as a kid, so she really loved it. But well, she whatever probably that... was the one that was making her be a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but whatever that unconventionality is, Sony didn't like it. So since that kind of fell apart, uh, Diablo Cody's done a couple of interviews about working on Barbie. So a little bit of this is going to be jumping forward a little bit, but uh, it's very interesting. So here is Jenny Ray. You will be our Diablo Cody. All right. I didn't really have the freedom then to write something that was faithful to the iconography. They wanted a girl boss feminist twist on Barbie, and I couldn't figure it out because that's not what Barbie is. Okay. So keep in mind, that's the rewrite idea of the Mary Poppins. Mm. Right. So whatever she can't, she's not be able to crack it. Um, and put your mindset in Lego Movie. Remember, Lego Movie came out. And you're like, how the fuck are they going to make this work? Yeah. And then that is just like, holy shit. Like, by the end of that movie, you're just like the twist with the, with the, that it's all happening in, in a kid's basement and all this kind yeah. of stuff. Like, okay. So that's what Cody's dealing with when she's writing Barbie. This is from an interview from uh, this year. I heard endless references to the Lego movie in development, and it created a problem for me because they had done it so well. Anytime I came up with something meta, it was too much like what they had done. It was a roadblock for me. But now enough time has passed that they just cast Will Ferrell as the antagonist in a real-life Barbie movie and nobody cares. Oh, my God. I didn't even put that together. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know even why I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I, when I saw Simon the trailer as the Mattel executive, I was like, really? <laughs> Mr. – what's his name? Lord Business? Yeah. Uh, pre, yeah Mr. Lord, Business. Pre, President Business. Yeah. yeah Lord Lord Business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just – Wow, they just <laughs> straight up were like, up. Yeah, that works. Yep, and he's then, the guy. So Will and Ferrell then he shows is the up villain and... of all of our favorite toys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, They're and... going to cast him as Cobra Commander next. <laughs> That's definitely he's, like... He's the new voice of um, Megatron. <laughs> Megatron. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely like unfortunate for her though, because it sounds like they basically wanted her to make what this movie is. Yeah. But it was just like Do that. The, Do the, that. Yeah. The timing wasn't quite there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh this is her on failing to write a screenplay. I never even produced an initial draft. I failed so hard at that project. I was literally incapable of turning in a Barbie draft. God knows I tried. <laughs> Yeah. So big lot of news yeah. for nothing. Yeah. I guess like kudos to her though that she didn't just like write some schlock and be like, here you go, here's a draft. Like she was like, <laughs> yeah. she had too much like integrity to turn in something bad, you know? <laughs> it was just like, sorry, I don't know how to crack this story. Yeah. Well, and Especially like, when you know, she probably happens. got so many notes, she'd be like, no, no, yeah. like that. no. Yeah. 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 So and the common thread will be these these producers um, these controlling meddling, it. Meddling executives. Yes. They, Ooh, they were absolutely controlling it. And I'm sure like they were like, oh, Mary Poppins is a great idea. And then Lego Movie came out and then they were just like, no, 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 we should do that. We and should then, Lego Movie. Like, just so many directions being pulled. Yeah. Uh, well, and, like, Barbie is a huge, like, it's such a huge brand. I was shocked at how much they allowed this movie to poke fun at Mattel. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like, yes. I was just like, damn, Mattel, okay. Like, yeah. that's just shocking to me. Usually companies that big are so overly protective of their brand and their their name. And they're yep. just like, no, yeah. no, no, you yeah. can't say anything bad about Mattel. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. Mm. <laughs> okay. At the end of 2015, Sony needs to get a movie into production soon or they will lose the rights. Mm. So they hire three different writers to write their own versions and to see which one they like the best. Oh, like one of those like big offs. Right, yeah. 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 <laughs> so the first is Burt Royale, um, who wrote Easy A. And then Hillary Winston wrote on Community, My Name is Earl and Happy Endings. 
And then the third person is Lindsay Beer, who hadn't had any produced projects at that point. Uh, But she's also the daughter of Sundance Film Festival co-founder Gary Beer. So uh, a year goes by. Sony thinks Winston's version could provide a blueprint going forward. Her version is about a character being kicked out of Barbie land for not being perfect enough. Hmm. Uh, she goes to the real world. It's kind of like a, a fish out of water tale, well, kind of like a Splash or en- Enchanted. Hmm. Uh, um, okay. Discovers that, quote, perfection comes on the inside, not the outside, and that the key to happiness is belief in oneself, free of the obligation to adhere to some unobtainable standard of perfection. Hmm. So this is starting to sound a little bit like... The actual movie, right? Right, it's getting closer to where it landed. Yeah. Then she returns to Barbie Land to save it. I don't know what that means. This script has not Well, it sounds like she's going to go back and stir some shit up. Yeah. Like like she got kicked out for not being perfect enough. She's coming back and be like, fuck you guys. (laughs) Yeah, she turns into the villain. (laughs) She turns into a horror movie. I learned some things. (laughs) Yeah, it's like a sla- it's like a slasher movie. I watch a Barbie slasher. Goes into the other Barbies' homes at night and cuts their hair off. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Try and regrow that back. It makes them all like weird Barbie. Yeah, yeah. she she's Paints making them face. weird Barbies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be pretty good. Who's perfect now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at the end of 2016, Sony asks who to take over. Ooh, I know. Do you know? I do, do know. You have a guess? I do not know. It's uh, Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer. Oh. Yeah, because I remember hearing that ages ago, and then nothing came of it, and I completely forgot about it. And then when they announced this Barbie movie, Lisa and I were like, you know, t- reading about it and stuff like that, and Lisa's like, oh, yeah, wasn't Amy Schumer going to be part of that? Yeah. And it, like, like a spark in my brain is like, oh, yeah, yeah I've yeah, totally I forgot that. about that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, And when that happened, of course, people were like, whoa, okay. That's something interesting. Yeah. Like something, Mm. they're doing something different, right? Right. So she's taking over with her sister, Kim Caramelli, um, will co-write. The film will be PG, Mm. so which is the opposite of everything Amy Amy Schumer, Schumer, right? Yeah. And production will start in spring of 2017. Yes, that that happened. Did no, that happen? no, 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 no. I can't imagine it did. I mean, Mat- I mean, Mattel's probably direct to video. Like their like thirteenth, like film yeah, probably came yeah, out they were at the time. Yeah. yeah, they're like by the time we've <laughs> they've they're working on this one movie, we've made seven, seven. <laughs> yeah, seven direct to DVD movies that were animated in like Indonesia or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Barbie in space. Yeah. So their version would have had Schumer's character be an ambitious inventor within Barbie land who all around didn't fit the mold of that world. Um, she's been making just we- really weird stuff and and uh, thinking outside the box, right? She's mm-hmm. whack job Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Mad um, scientist Barbie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, however, the producers wanted her to invent something like high heels made of out of jello. And Schumer's like, what? Why? Like, why that, right? Because we can sell them. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Barbie jello shoes. Imagine, imagine the money we'll make when we yeah. put those on shelves. Partners. Partner yeah. with jello. <laughs> and so well, she's got a new hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's also made of jello. No, that's whipped cream. It's made of whipped cream. <laughs> Malibu Stacy. Malibu Stacy, yeah. yeah. So to convince her to do this idea, uh, the producers gifted Amy Schumer with a pair of Manalo Blonics. It's a very fancy, like a fancy pair of shoes. I, I, it's a like, shoe brand. It's a fancy pants shoe brand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and Schumer was like, "This is way before they made of Jello." <laughs> like I don't. <laughs> no, like like they why were are just... they pushing this like Jello shoe idea so I, hard? I don't know. <laughs> oh, gotta get also, those Manolos. Are, are there Jello shoes? Yeah, those Jellolos. Are... <laughs> yeah. So Schumer is immediately kind of offended by this. Was idea. it because of her name? Because her name's Schumer, and they were like, "She must love shoes." <laughs> Put that together. She yeah. must love Stupid. shoes. Therefore, she's a Schumer. Shoes. Yeah. Make it about shoes. So this is Amy Schumer about <laughs> mm-hmm. being uh, th- uh, thrown that idea. The idea 
that that's just what every woman must want right there. I should have gone, you've got the wrong gal. They definitely didn't want to do it the way I wanted to do it. The only way I was interested in doing it. Mm. So, again, they're kind of pushing these ideas over and over. Like, okay, these the, the, these producers are sitting there just like shoving that at her. Yeah. yeah. Right. And um, there's an irony there that they're like, we want to hire these like edgy, independent, like funny women who are known for like mm-hmm. their feminist humor. And then we're going to tell them what to write. Yeah, like, exactly. that's so ironic. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then they why want, did you they, fucking hire them? Yeah, they want they want the name. Yeah. They don't want Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah the yeah. clout. They don't yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, we got Amy Schumer on board. Oh, yeah, we got Diablo. And everyone's Cody. like, oh and then they're like, and they're right, making a standard ass Barbie movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So in March of 2017, Schumer left the project citing artistic creative Oh creative differences. differences. <laughs> yeah. Scheduling conflicts. Oh um, fuck. God damn it. <laughs> He tricked us. <laughs> he tricked us, Ray. <laughs> but it was actually creative differences. differences. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she went. She wanted to make something feminist and cool, and they didn't. And some weirdo at Mattel or Sony or whatever had a foot fetish. And she was just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't. I'm out. I just want to put my feet in Jello. That's <laughs> probably. Ew. That's probably what it was. Like some weirdo who's just like, Yeah, I want to watch the Jello squish between your toes. <laughs> <laughs> some fucking weirdo. Uh, <laughs> how many shots of the feet can we get in this movie? Yeah. Well, We're going to need to do at least 45 takes of that, of her putting on the jello shoe. <laughs> Look, I did a proof of concept film just in my home. I want to show you. Uh, you see how that one really sticks to her feet? Uh, well, listen, to, listen to that squish, squish noise. noise. <laughs> this is my ASMR. <laughs> 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 So, okay, in July, Sony starts courting Anne Hathaway to star. But she's a brunette. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) And hires (laughs) Olivia Milch, who had just um, finished Ocean's 8, Mm. to do a rewrite. At at this point, it's still the idea of Barbie being kicked out for not being perfect enough. They also hired Alithia Jones, an Australian TV director. So... It seems like they're just grasping at straws right now. Mm-hmm. But they have to have this deal in production by 2018. This obviously doesn't happen. Right. Sony fails this. Um, and the rights for Barbie goes back to Mattel. Mm. So Parks and McDonald's, the producers that were pushing that whole thing, Winston's draft, Sony, all of them out. So mm. it's all in the trash bin. None, n- all that work, nothing's gone. Nothing's. Gone. Yeah. Around that time... Um, Mattel had started a film division of their own and their top priority is Barbie. There's a lot of similarities to what they were doing with what Marvel did, where they, they were like, let's make our own movies under our own house and not have people fuck with it. Yeah. Right? So we can control what it is. Right. So. I love that it's like our top priority is Barbie. And I'm, I'm like, what other toy do you make? Hot Wheels. We'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, God, you guys are going to be drunk. Sorry. How many times I've said that? <laughs> um, <laughs> the new uh, Mattel CEO, Enon Kreis, uh, not even a month into the job, meets with Margot Robbie saying, it was Margot, there was no other option. Mm-hmm. So he creates this new film industry or this Mattel Films thing. And Robbie was interested in producing the film under her production company, Lucky Chap. But she had no intention of playing Barbie. She just wanted to be part of the project. Right. And so she signed on to produce at the end of 2018 with Warner Brothers. So it went from Universal to Sony. Now it's at Warner Brothers. At this time, while Mattel was talking with Patty Jenkins to direct, so she had just done... Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman, like one year after that. And Robbie, after seeing Little Women, approached Greta Gerwig to write the film. Uh, so this is Robbie Brenner, head of Mattel Films. Now, I'm just giving, just throwing you a bone here, Clint. Mm-hmm. Uh, that this, this, Not to be confused with Margot Robbie. Robbie Brenner is someone else. And it's a woman. <laughs> so, okay. so it's not. But Margot I'm just Robbie, giving. I'm just giving you more stuff to do because I, you know, throwing okay. you a bone here. All right. Okay? So it's Robbie Brenner, head of Mattel, who was who head of Mattel Films, who was a woman, but it's not Margot Robbie. <laughs> yes. Robbie Brenner. Gotcha. Okay. Got it. 
Before the idea of Greta came up, we went out to a bunch of writers just to hear different ideas, and we heard a bunch of pitches, but there was nothing that ever felt like it was worth making a movie about until this idea of Greta directing the movie. I can say when Greta Gerwig signed on in July 2019, like, I, I immediately was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Like... I wouldn't. I was not interested and would not have seen this movie if I or if she hadn't directed it. I wouldn't have been interested in seeing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, for both of you and me, it was kind of like, like that was the reason to oh, see okay. it. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you hadn't seen any of her other movies, which yeah. is why it was weird. Like, <laughs> but I mean, I just know she's really she's talented. really talented. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but like I saw Lady Bird. Yeah, Lady Bird was and, great, and and that's an amazing movie. And Little Women is a great movie too. So I don't. I don't disagree. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen them. That's my point. I know, I know, but I. It's it is. Like... A, it is an interesting choice, though, because when you're, yeah, like when a director like her, who's just known for being a really solid writer, creating characters that are really um, three dimensional and human, and yeah. have a lot of depth, and like being like more like edgy and a feminist, and you're just like, oh, okay, like this isn't going to be like a standard like silly Barbie movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and she. Her one uh, demand was that she get to write the film with her partner and fellow filmmaker, Noah Baumbach, um, who is also, I would describe that exact same way. He, yeah. He, his films, he makes very human people. Yeah. They're and married, right? Not married. Oh, okay. But they have kids together. Uh, Thus, partner. The partner part. Bit. Got it. I know that's kind of confusing but when they you're are like- a couple. They're not like- th- just, A couple. They're yes. like life partners as well as like creative Yeah, yeah. Writing, yeah. Part, saying a partner partners. also doesn't make sense. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they could just confusing. be business partners. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. like, yeah. I think it's so, important to know that well, they're like partner partners. Well, they're like partners in every sense of the word. Oh. Aww. Aww. Like how so, Ian and I are partners. Uh, okay. What's that face? <laughs> Now you know how I feel anytime I try to show any sort of like <laughs> familiarity, camaraderie, you know, slightest bit of affection to this yeah. man that I've known for nearly 20 years. You guys, yeah. I am not the human person in this podcast. <laughs> He's a fucking robot. <laughs> I don't have enough RAM to understand his, what you guys are talking about. His programming to love is glitching and has been for <laughs> it never fully made it out of beta testing. <laughs> Uh, neither Gerwig or Margot Robbie read the previous drafts. So they are starting entirely from scratch. Really? Yeah. That's, That's fascinating. That's really interesting. Hmm. Yeah, because the kids well, yeah, go leaving like, Barbie land and then coming back, right? The, yeah. the fish out of water tale. Kind right. Because yeah. they yeah. weren't like, yeah, because they weren't hired to rewrite that script because that was with an entirely different production yeah. company that lost the rights. And so those just like went off yeah. into the ether. Yeah. This is Gerwig on why she chose to direct the film. Because we wrote so much of it in lockdown and nobody was going to the movie theaters, nobody was seeing anybody really. And there was this sort of deep isolation and fear. And at that moment we thought, well, I don't know if anyone will ever go to the movie theaters again. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know in what form the world's going to exist. And I think it in a way freed us to write something that was so wild and anarchic and joyful. You wrote it for yourself. Yeah, well, in a way we did mm. because it was like we were each other's entertainment at that moment. And I thought, I can't bear to let anyone else do this. So after writing all those, all the jokes that she was like, I, I have to be the one to direct this. And she signed on in July of 2021. Their first draft was pretty close to what the film ended up being. And Mattel was a little scared of it, uh, but <laughs> were committed. I mean, it, it, like you were saying, like there, it was. It's pretty. There at times just makes them look like absolute fools. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And then and there's just little little bits in there about um, Ruth Handler and. Yeah. There's um, a lot of like poking fun at 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 Barbie and about yeah. like what she represents and. It's kind of like asking somebody to roast you. Like, hey, come roast <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And then you're, and it's just like, you got to be okay with whatever they say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 You can't be yeah. offended that you can't be like, well, no, hang yeah, on. Hang exactly. On. <laughs> this is uh, Gerwig on the complicated legacy of Barbie. I think the thing we wanted to do was not deny how complicated she is and how there are so many things about her that are amazing and also like, oh, I wish you hadn't done that. I think that's what made it rich, was being able to be in all the thorniness and not denying it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? like... so, so so, that's, I mean, it's it's what Gerwig was trying to do, was to kind of make, um, point those stuff out. Like, uh, I mean, one of the best, one of the best moments in that movie is that part where Margot Robbie's in there saying, 
I can't be perfect or whatever. And then like it cuts to the narrator. Uh, Note to the producers. Yeah. You, you should not have cast Margot Robbie in this role. To, to, to make this point. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> the, the irony of, of Margot Robbie making this point. Yeah, yeah exactly. That, that's the weird magical thing about Margot Robbie, though, is that like she's like stupid, beautiful, but also like seems like the most relatable person. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. you're like, God, God damn it. I can't be mad at you for being as beautiful as you are. Stop yeah. it. You gorgeous, gorgeous <laughs> bitch. <laughs> She definitely succeeded in getting into the complicated thorniness of it because yeah. that is a complicated movie. Yeah. yeah. So themes so on themes. M- Mattel was like, okay, we're committed to being bold and giving um, our filmmakers full creative freedom. So they didn't really have anything. This they were kind of like, okay, all right, let's just mm, let let her do yeah. this just and like, like, yeah, and just being like, okay, you know what, you know, uh, cries the the CEO was talking about how he's, they're like. We, we take our business very seriously, but we don't take ourselves seriously. So you can definitely poke fun at us. And the only the only time they ha- ever had an issue, um, the Mattel COO did show up on set to fight with Gerwig about one scene. Not sure what the scene is, um, but they clearly misread it mm. on the page. Uh. And so when when they showed up, the cast performed the scene for the COO, and they were like. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> like, yeah. And then they were like, "Okay, continue." Um, yeah, like sometimes it's all it's all about the tone. Yeah, like exactly. on the page, yeah. maybe it doesn't. Well, it's come like it's, it's like getting a text message from somebody and being like, "What the fuck do they mean by that?" <laughs> yeah. And then you like read it again and again, like, "Oh, they're probably just like." Or you step away and then you, yeah. then you read it again. You're like, "Oh, okay, okay. they were being an ass." Or that's oh, why okay. I have to like pepper every text that I send with like one thousand emojis, yeah. like. <laughs> At work, like if, it's, you, if you see a winky if, face, you know I'm just kidding with <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, I don't even care if it's unprofessional. Like I'm just like emoji, emoji, emoji. Yeah, well, not me. I I love my my the sarcasm I throw in my my texts. No, oh, it's, 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 you come across as like such a dick sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's part, it's part of your programming. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I like people to, I like people to think that I'm being a dick, even if I'm not. Yeah, that's why. I mean, I gotta, I gotta dangle that carrot for Clint. <laughs> I know he loves me. I go to sleep every night. Do just you? Being like, I, I, that's what I have to tell myself. <laughs> you never will. He doesn't use emojis in his text. I know. <laughs> Who? Those texts that he sends that say "I love you." You're just like, I don't. Is that real? Yeah. <laughs> There's no emoji. Well, no, no, no. Then it would be an emoji because then <laughs> yeah. it would just be like. Oh, oh shit. shit! What, what? <laughs> is it real? <laughs> I'll walk up to him at work and I'll just like chat with him for a second, and then I'll walk away and talk to one of his coworkers on his team. Is like Ian and I are friends, and he'll be like, "Nope." <laughs> <laughs> Stop spreading lies. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a big Will Ferrell fan, Kreese CEO um, loved his character. Oh, that's so awesome. He was just like. Sure. Mm, yeah, yeah. Have at it. Why did he have the drumsticks? <laughs> like, oh, we scene. talked about this. Why did we? I don't think we came up with oh, a good answer. No, I, no, like, no, I need it, to know. With, uh, they were having a jam session. Oh, a jam session. That's oh, right. Yeah. Because it's, like, it's just for that one scene. I was like, yeah. I, I, I was watching this like, what the hell? We it's, no, it's, it's they were having a, like an idea a, jam yeah. session, and he had drums. I think that's what it that's was. Really yeah, yeah. So we were talking about it, and I was like, yeah, I don't know. That was weird. Like maybe it was kind. It's maybe it's kind of like a like a fidget spinner thing. Like he just need. Like he was just kind of futzing with something. But then I remembered that line where he's like, we're just having a jam, a creative jam session or whatever. And I was yeah. like, oh, that is such fucking CEO bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they're just like, hey, guys, let's all just have a jam session. And like, no, I, no and ideas everyone, are bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then everyone gets their own like fucking drumsticks. And they're just like, this is so cheesy. <laughs> uh, like it's like, that's when, it's like corporate, embrace it. I know. I, it's, it's like when you would go to like a like theater camp or like a theater class, and they would do like those those workshops. You have to like near something. Like, this yeah. Is, this is so fucking, yeah. This is so fucking stupid. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. The yeah. Give me forced out of here. participation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Filming began in March of 2022. So finally, we're here. Um, seeing as Barbie was a toy, Gerwig wanted r- real sets that made you want to pick up and play with them. So everything on set made it look like, oh, that, that's tangible, right? Oh, I, I love those sets. They and, did a great job, um, yeah. And seeing as how Barbie came out during the 50s, Gerwig thought it appropriate that it looked like a Gene Kelly era musical. Yeah, like everything on like sound stages, yeah, like these very- Elaborate matte paintings uh-huh. and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And and if you see behind the scenes, it looks just like it yeah. in the movie. 
like it, it's pretty it's was, all there yeah, yeah. Right. No, that was a really cool like production design choice for sure the, yeah the and plastic the, beach is like, yeah. so great <laughs> yeah and the like the the transition from barbie land to like that's all like filmed practically yeah that's all practical like all of like the like kind of stuff uh-huh. that they use like yeah. where they're just like the they're boat, going the rocket yeah, ship. Yeah, the like, boat. That's yeah, all, like, yeah you can see like how like, they use pieces. how they use what they use to make it look like waves and stuff like oh, that oh that's yeah. fun yeah yeah, it's so there's like a, very it's, little CG in the movie. It looks like um like a sweeted version. Or yeah, like a, exactly. Like fancy <laughs> sweeting. Yeah. Well, it's like when those old those those old like black and white films where they where they got a shot in the car, but the car is stationary and they just have the background like on the yeah on that belt that belt looping around. Yeah. yeah. But because of this, because everything is real, production ran out of what? Paint. Cash. Pink paint pink paint oh, that's right yeah it, ca- it caused a worldwide shortage okay so <laughs> that oh was the God. story so, oh okay Co- so covid the supply the supply, supply chain. chain it was a supply chain <laughs> issue <laughs> and the the people that were providing the paint for the production they completely ran out and so the story like kind of ballooned from there that, oh, okay. that there was a shortage around the world there was no but it was basically just anywhere. saying there they were supply it. chain issues yeah. with paint, and and so they struggled a little bit. They didn't cause that. I, I don't yeah. like. I think that story got blown out way out of proportion. <laughs> they just had to go find more pink paint. Yeah. Hey, here's the here's the thing that's good about paint is that if you take a red paint and a white paint and you mix them, <laughs> you got pink paint. So the the Color thing is, is that the, the thing is is that they they made sure because they it was like the same pink the same pink on everything and so that's why it became such a problem barbie pink because it couldn't be just like okay this one's pastel pink yeah exactly mm. easter pink mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> side shit show okay we're completely unrelated in a way in 2021 during covid warner brothers announced that every one of their releases would hit hbo max the same day as they hit theaters we talked about this on the podcast right um, and and the, some of the stuff was uh, the Matrix, Matrix, yeah, Mortal Kombat, mm-hmm. King Kong, uh, Kong versus Godzilla, stuff like that. So Christopher Nolan, who had uh, Warner Brothers had produced all of his movies mm-hmm. since Insomnia, right? So he he was just working for them solidly, and all his movies are huge hits, right? Right, right. He was so upset. That they did this, and he made he said some line about how all these actors and producers and stuff like that went to bed thinking they were were working for the best movie company in the world, and then they woke up to found out that they were going to be on the worst streaming service in the world. <laughs> um, so he was furious, um, and so he took Oppenheimer to Universal. Oh, so interesting. Yeah, so he bailed on Warner, Warner Brothers, Brothers yeah. for the first time. And you'd and, think that would be enough to get them to change their mind. Like that, right? that would make them go, oh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Come back, oh, Nolan. Yeah, we, right. We changed our mind. I mean, you put your mindset in what was going on back then. That's People true. People weren't actually going to the theaters that everybody much. Everybody thought and, theaters were dead. Yeah, and yeah. only yeah, certain only certain people were, you know who were like, oh, fuck it, and we're going. So yeah. so it, it's you know it's very complicated. But apparently, in retaliation, Warner Brothers deliberately placed Barbie. On the same day as Oppenheimer. <gasps> Ooh. Whoa. And so and that's conspiracy. just a rumor, but right. like there were some sources that say that this yeah. is what was happening. And Nolan took this very personally <laughs> and was just super furious about all this. So, unbeknownst to either studio, because of this, because those two movies were coming out the same day, um, the very organic social media trend arose called Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer, a frequent meme of fun counter programming, seeing one serious, heavy film and then seeing a bubbly popcorn one. Right. Yeah. And it was so funny. Seeing those kinds of things were just so really good. Um, it was kind of like um, when the writer's strike happened. And then the actor strike, and it was like the right the writer strike, and a sh- shot of Oppenheimer, <laughs> and then and then the actor is going on strike, and a shot of Barbie, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that, yeah. That, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so oh, like sometimes the internet can be great. I know, Mostly right? It's like terrible. just very oh, organic, yeah. like yeah. just this thing that just came out where people were just like, yeah, fuck it, like that's so fun. Yeah. We two movies, 
And I've even had friends like they'll they they've asked me, "Have you seen Barbenheimer yet?" Yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's it's what you it, when you're going to discuss it, you're going to discuss the other, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, I've seen half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't I've get all half. the way through it. Yeah, I've seen the Heimer part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so did this help the box office? I don't know, but uh, I I mean I think it does. But who's to really say? Because there's very organic things like like making fun of Morbius. That was this huge internet yeah. joke. Mm-hmm. And then Sony was like, oh, look, they're making, they're just, it's, it's a whole joke. And so they re-released it. They brought it back and put it in more theaters. And it just didn't, it, it bombed just again much as mm-hmm. more as the first time. So like, who's to know if, who's to say <laughs> that, that Barbenheimer was like a force of people actually interested right. in going? Who knows? There's those film like, uh, film buffs who are like completionists, right? And they want to be those kind of people who are like, I want to be able to say that I have seen Barbenheimer. And yeah. So they will go and see both movies. Yeah. I got a 100% the movies. Um, <laughs> the movie. I think though that the, the movie still has to be good, right? Because there are there are things that spin up on the internet like all the memes around Morbius where people or like making fun of it or whatever. But that doesn't mean like it's a movie people are going to go out of their way to go see. They're yeah. just like, I'm going to like watch this when it comes to streaming or I'm going to pirate this or like whatever yeah. the hell, right? Mm. But like with Barbie and Oppenheimer, it was there was like this whole like buzz and people were having fun with it. But it was two huge movies that people still wanted to go to the theater to see. Yeah. yeah. Because even though I got a chip on my shoulder about Christopher Nolan and his fucking sound mixes, but even with that, he's very smart about how he creates experiences that where yeah. You're always like, I have to see this in theater because I know it's going to be an experience because it's shot in IMAX and it's like going to be fucking amazing. And like this is going to be huge and epic and it's not going to be the same on my my TV or whatever. But like people are just like, yeah, I'll watch this fucking shitty Morbius movie on my TV. I don't give crap. Like I'll probably be playing Tears of the Kingdom while I'm watching it. You know, I'm going to half pay attention to this shit. So Barbie opens July 21st, 2023. Initially projected to have $55 million opening weekend in the U.S., the film opened to what? I'm going to say I would, double that. It was like $300 million or something, wasn't it? Like, <laughs> Not that high. Oh. $165 okay. million. Oh, wow. So way beyond their projections. Yeah. Like, they were just like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> so huge. Yeah. Uh, becoming the biggest opening for a female director Woo. and biggest opening for a non-sequel. Woo! So. Biggest opening for a non-sequel. Like the MCU are all sequels, you know, right? Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. Like Batman Begins had a pretty fine opening weekend, but Dark Knight was enormous. Right, 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 right. right. Okay, and thanks in large part to this Barbenheimer nonsense, Oppenheimer opened with eighty two million, far beyond their expectations. So you do you think that Barbie actually brought up Oppenheimer? Which probably pissed off Christopher Nolan. I think it were... did both. I think it you went. Think so? I think it went back, back, backwards. Because I had like a ton of friends who I would see like on their social media who would go to the theater dressed for Oppenheimer. Like they specifically made an event of it. They got like suits from the era, and then like oh. the next thing is like we brought like they brought change of clothes to change <laughs> in the bathroom at the theater and then to go see Barbie. Barbie. Yeah, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> no, and this is like that's like multiple people who I know or follow on social media yeah, did this. Yeah. Like that kind Interesting. Of but okay, so but would you say that those people were people who would have seen both movies anyway, or were like some of them Barbie people that were just seeing Oppenheimer because of like the Barbenheimer thing or vice versa? I think they're probably people who would see the who would see both movies. But not in the way that they did. Not They'd in be the like, same hey, this day. weekend we're going to okay. go see Barbie, and then next we're going to go see Oppenheimer. Yeah, and I, I mean, to me, it's strange because I don't think like those audience have audiences so have so no different. Crossover. Yeah, and and <laughs> like what? Like Oppenheimer, you're going to talk about. It's not a movie about dropping bombs. It's a movie about making a bomb. Yeah, about it. Um, That's stupid. You uh, have to be a very like kind of like history nerd kind of thing, and yeah. obviously yeah. there's the Christopher Nolan part of it, and some of it is the cast and. Um, but yeah, like why was it so as big as it yeah, is? Yeah, like right? I can't imagine a bunch of like Christopher Nolan fans that are just like, or like his like older history buffs being like, well, I have to go see Barbie, Barbie now. Beca- yeah, because exactly. of the Barbenheimer <laughs> yeah. thing. Like, or like yeah. I can't remember, like I can't imagine a bunch of like gals on a, like a gals weekend going like, let's go see Oppenheimer after this. It's just like 
the audiences have no crossover. Yeah. So I think that there was definitely this huge thing with Barbie and Oppenheimer is like the return to theaters. Right. Like going back to the movies to see just anything. Yeah. yeah. Even though one of those movies is completely just a biopic. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. A, a pretty straight laced movie. In, right. In, 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 in a way. But it was right. turned so, into a, an event. Like it, yeah, there exactly. used to be with the Star Wars movies. Yeah. I did wear my hot pink Barbie lipstick for the occasion. So. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's my version of dressing up. Very cool. So uh, as of today of recording, Barbie has grossed $594 million Ooh. in the United States, $1.3 billion worldwide. Uh, becomes not only the highest grossing film for a female director, but the highest grossing film in Warner Brothers history. Wow. wow. Passing the Dark Knight. Passing the Batmans. <laughs> Christopher Nolan. Oh my yeah. God, he's so. so furious right now, you guys. <laughs> he's like fuming somewhere. Look, I get, I, listen, I like Christopher Nolan films, <laughs> but I, sometimes I just want to look at him in the face and be like, we get it. You're a smart guy. <laughs> You know, like, but I'm not going to rewatch Interstellar. <laughs> yeah, I have no desire to see Oppenheimer again. Um, I honestly like haven't had a desire to see it really at all. I it's good. I haven't seen it. It's a, oh, you it's haven't? Fine. No, like, I, 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 I chalk it up mostly just being like, I'm a husband and father with three kids who has no time to do anything else but be that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, I know. I get it. Okay. To find a babysitter, like, hey, uh, you want to sit at our house for like f at least four hours while we go to a movie and come back? Yeah, um, it's hard. You know, Oppenheimer also had kids and was a husband and a father, and he managed to make an <laughs> atomic bomb. So I'm just going to point that out. Yeah. Didn't he also have like an affair? And, <laughs> yeah. Like, not, and it was, and wasn't yeah, he had <laughs> time to have an affair. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Look how much he achieved. No, but he couldn't, he couldn't like leave though, right? Like, he had to stay there and build, build a bomb. <laughs> So, uh, speaking of Oppenheimer, after crossing 700 million worldwide, Oppenheimer became the highest grossing film um, that never reached the number one spot. Oh, so, because it was always Barbie. Always behind behind Barbie. Hilarious. <laughs> and Barbie was number one for four weeks in a row until Blue Beetle. Rotten Tomatoes, Barbie. We're back to Barbie. Let's talk about Barbie. <laughs> We've been uh, talking about it. 88% from critics, 83% mm. from audiences. Okay. The movie was banned in Kuwait, Lebanon, and Algeria for promoting homosexuality, <laughs> which I was like, what? What? <laughs> Was it because of Magic Earring Ken? <laughs> no, because nobody nobody figured <laughs> no that picks, out. Picked up nobody on picked that. up on that. But it's it's such a like okay, the bunch of guys hanging out like what? Yeah, yeah. I think one of them also had be just because there was a trans woman in the, in the movie. Yeah, I guess any kind of like male Bonding. friendship and intimacy <laughs> is just like well, you can't be a man and have close intimate friends, so you yeah. must be gay. Yeah. Um, Maybe. and it's no, no, what? <laughs> what say it? Uh, uh, Ian's a robot. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what is friendship with another man? <laughs> um, it is banned in Vietnam because of Barbie's hand drawn map that includes the nine dash line, a disputed border along the South China Sea. Yeah, it's what? Big, yeah, I know. It's That's this really so special specific <laughs> I, yeah i know <laughs> it's 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 literally a map drawn by a child uh -huh. <laughs> and and it, people took offense to and it. people are like Ugh. wow yeah 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 huh. um lastly other mattel films in active development we have barney with daniel kalua so this is the Mattel films. The, yeah. This is what you were talking okay. about. So, and Daniel Kaluuya is going to do. Is going to be Barney? Yeah. It, apparently it's really fucked up like version of it. And they're just letting him do it. That's amazing. Uh, is it going to be sort of like death to death smooshy? to smooshy? I don't, I don't know. Smoochie. <laughs> Smoochie. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Okay, I, don't, I didn't really run into it, but apparently it's very subversive. Very strange. Huh. Uh, Polly Pocket with mm. Lena Dunham. <sighs> Loved Polly Pockets. So did Lisa. Yeah, this they're is great. They're, they're just like doing the Lisa cinematic universe here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the millennial but again, girl cinematic yeah. universe. But again, Lena Dunham, very strange choice, right? Right. Uh -huh. Hot Wheels. I knew about Hot Wheels. With J.J. Yeah. Abrams. Thomas and Friends with Aww, Mark Forster. Cute. Major Matt Mason 
which is like a uh, like a GI Joe uh, astronaut I don't kind even, of like I don't even toy know back in back in like the 50s. 60s, okay, okay, okay. Uh, with Tom Hanks. So now they're not. So now not only are they they're doing nostalgia things for people like us millennials who grew up in the yeah. 80s and 90s, but now like hey, let's let's get the boomers. Let's go. Yeah, let's exactly. Go, let's right. go to the 50s. Yeah, like I remember Major Matt Mason. I oh, had one. They're coming out with a Howdy Doody movie. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Uh, Rock'em Sock'em Robots. That's with awesome. Vin Diesel. Oh, well, okay. Didn't they make a? Ro- they tried to make a Rock'em they tr- Sock'em. They would. Movie. They tried to make one a long time ago, and then Real Steel Real came Steel. out, oh. which is basically the exact it's, same. Yeah, plot. that's Rock'em Sock'em and so, Robots. So, like, I don't know what you're gonna do with it. Interesting. Um, Bob the Builder, American Girl dolls. Is one of them gonna be the slave owner? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the one was. One, one was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Look it up. Uh, well, it's, hey, maybe, maybe whoever picks up that film can do can, the same uh, thing that Gerwig yes, did and yes. just like point out some the the weird. What's the one that you said before, American Girl? Uh, Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. Okay. Uno. Yes. <laughs> how, how do you I'm do here that? for it? <laughs> and uh, apparently, this is script is already. It, Written and they love it. I don't know what the, how much far along they are. Can I guess what? Slinky. <laughs> no. Okay. Etch a sketch. A horror comedy. <gasps> Magic Eight Ball. Oh my god. Oh, that is fucking yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could see that. That makes sense. <laughs> a horror comedy for a Magic Eight Ball. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I am in. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I mean, like a Magic Eight Ball is basically like light witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Like you're asking a question. It's like it's like a like a like starter Ouija board. Yeah, it's yeah. the Ouija board starter pack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does Stacy like me? Shake, shake, shake. After she kills you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. turn around. Yeah. What? She's behind She's you. She's behind you. <laughs> Do you want Stacy to love you? How much? How... Is it going to be like a death <laughs> yeah. note kind of right. thing? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. What, what will they you... die? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are you willing to give up for Stacy yeah. to love you? <laughs> it takes a pinky. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like it could, like a like a monkey's paw, like a monkey paw yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. Careful what you wish for. Careful what you ask. The yeah. Magic Eight Ball. Yeah. See, you're saying they didn't. No one asked us to write these movies, but I feel <laughs> like they really should have. Yeah. And they have already written this one. Though. I have a lot of. Well, I have a lot of ideas about Uno. Okay. So, if you're executives one in particular. Yes. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, see, his comedy programming is on on point. <laughs> I, I know you go to bed every night asking your magic eight ball. Does, Does he, he like, like me? me? <laughs> <laughs> Ask again later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one of those times where it, it floats up and it's on the corner, so you don't have what any answer. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> no yeah, answer. Tried to shake it one way or the other. <laughs> Outlook felt so good. Damn it. <laughs> uh, so, Barbie. Was it worth it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Um, I do want I do want to jump into the the let's let's talk about the film. Let's talk about its themes, but let's separate the two. Let's talk about the quality of the film, and then we can talk about the themes that are in there. But I love the movie. I thought it was fucking hilarious. I did yeah, too. It's great. Qu- quite a good time. Laugh out loud. The sets were amazing. Um, mm-hmm. Even though Lizzo's gotten into some hot water, like her whole opening song was, <laughs> was, was amazing. Yeah, I loved it. Like we we like in the car, we listen to the Barbie soundtrack like on repeat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a great soundtrack. It is so good. Other than I will get, I'll, I will take them to task about the fact that there was the easiest needle drop in history set for that movie, and that would be an aqua's Barbie girl. Barbie girl. Yeah, and they. And it's that stupid bastardized Nicki Minaj version right. during the credits. Oh. And I, I, I've heard that it's probably because Mattel sued Aqua and all, right. had all those kind oh, of yeah, issues. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, well, I but fucking... like that would have been so easy, so easy to drop that song yeah. somewhere. But yeah, I, I there are a lot of little things in the movie that I, me and Jenny Ray were kind of griping with. I think when they're in the real world is kind of the weakest point of the movie. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I agree with you. Just like, there's just some like stupid leaps of logic. She gets smacked in the ass. She punches the guy. Then they, she gets arrested and Ken gets arrested. Like what? what? Yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It was just like let's move past it. Anyway, um, but then when when Ken is sitting there talking to all these people about the patriarchy, I was sitting there. I was sitting there going, "This would be so funny if Ken turns out to be the bad guy." <laughs> and I, so I was sitting there thinking that, and the fact that he does is so fucking awesome. It's so so yeah, good. Yeah. Um, but the 
Uh, when I learned but the like patriarchy wasn't a, about horses, I lost interest. Yeah, yeah, but like, but also not a not a bad guy in the sense that like he himself like that's where like the nuance comes in, right? Like because you still you still liked Ken and you still wanted Ken to be okay. Like you yeah, were yeah. like, ah, oh, Ken, like get your head out of your ass, you know? And but it he, was but he became the antagonist, right? Right via patriarchy. So like, really, a patriarchy is the bad guy. <laughs> but like, yes, yeah, no, that made it like a really fun twist because he. He's like felt powerless. There was a lot of like, I know know we're we're talking about like the movie itself and not the themes, but there were a lot of themes that touched on like inceldom, right? Oh, yeah. Where he's just like, I'm amazing and such a nice guy. Like, why does she not love me? And like putting all of his self-worth on like a woman loving him and then basically turns to toxic masculinity in order to feel powerful, right? And feel some control over his life. Yeah. You know, and then she tells him like, why does like... Like, find out who you are. Like, why does it have to be about me? Like, why does who you are hinge on my loving you? Like, yeah, yeah. Fi- like figure your shit out, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was so great. And so it's it's interesting because, like, I've talked to some people who have been like, oh, I, I was – I really didn't like all the, like, anti-male themes in there. Like, I didn't like all the anti-men themes. And I was just like, I don't think you got the movie. Right. Because, like, that's not – like, yeah, there were a lot of jokes at, like, the expense of men and a lot of, like, s- s- jokes about, like, stereotypical dumb things that men do, um, which are were fucking hilarious. But, like, that's the point of satire, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you're, you're poking fun at these, like, kind of stereotypical things, like, call attention to them. Right. But then there was, like, the, that deeper layer of, like, the male friendship that we talked about, right? Where, and, like, Ken finding out who he was. And that he's Kenuff, like, you know, he like it, it's just it's so like layered and complicated. And so like for if you walked away from that movie going, that was really anti-male, just like you're you fucking you, you didn't, didn't get it. The, yeah. You, you most likely probably went into that movie already thinking that that's yeah. what it was going to be. Yeah. Without yeah. Actually letting yeah, yourself open much. up to a, to a yeah. different idea. Yeah. And didn't, but every time now I go to the fridge to get myself like, you know, an alcoholic beverage, I always say, like, I'm going to get myself a brewski beer. <laughs> a brewski beer. <laughs> I, I think you're a mojo dojo casa house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's super interesting to me that um, I in this I've heard this from multiple people that Ken was their favorite character and it was he was for me as well because I think he had the most interesting arc mm-hmm. and I thought that was very strange that he kind of stole the movie I mean without yeah. a doubt he has the best he has the best moment in the movie. The the fucking song yeah. Yeah. is like the showstopper. Oh, I know. Ryan and, Gosling is now like on a top 100, like Billboard yeah. top 100 for this song. It's it's awesome. Yeah. And it's just like, it's like, I love, like speaking of the, the like the quality, I loved how it turned into kind of like, even though I, I don't really like those movies, but I loved like how it turned into a 50s musical. Yeah. Like where it just, it was on those big sets and then there's just this big dance number yeah. and this <laughs> void <laughs> and like, and yeah. it's just, it just didn't care, right? And it was just, uh, just going for it. And I, I love that for that. Um, But the, like we, me and Jane were talking about like one of the things I didn't like about the movie was Mar- Margot Robbie's Barbie. Like her character was almost a blank slate for people to project themselves onto. And my argument for this, is, for my point, is that for a protagonist, now we're getting a real geeky with film theory here, <laughs> but the protagonist needs to be the person kind of pushing forward. And she literally is given the moment to be like, the here, are you going to go on this adventure or not? When she hands a, um, she has the shoes in her hand. Oh, yeah. And she goes, uh, the Birkenstocks or the, the, the heels heel. or whatever. And she like she's literally being given... This is just it's a, the red a, a pill, film, blue pill. Yeah, it's it's moment. the film trope of just like, is the hero going to go on the journey? And yeah. they make that choice. She does not make that choice. That choice is made for her. Yeah, it's like when and, it's like when Luke does like, I'm going to go with you to to Alderaan. Yeah, he yeah. could have just stayed. Uh, Bilbo going on the adventure with Gandalf. Yeah. Like it, it's um, they're choosing to do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she doesn't make that choice. And so throughout, it's just kind of like it's a blank slate of a character. Yeah, she's a reluctant protagonist. And I think that that's more real life. Like people don't choose things that are hard. Like that's very yeah. much a, like a movie storybook thing. Like most people do not want things to change or be more difficult. And so the fact that when you're presented with this choose the heel or the Birkenstock, she's like, I'll take the heel, please. Thanks. It's just yeah. like, of course, because yeah. that's how people are. Like because <laughs> yeah. that's human nature, right? Like, but you that's want not things- movies. Sure. Yeah. Which but- also kind of makes it elevate that movie 
in a weird way also because it's, like, it's not following a typical movie hero hero's yeah. journey yeah and because it was like the easy way that most regular folks would do but to still be as good as it was it's still like yeah kind of pumps it up a little bit even more I, well so i don't think that was her choice moment like she was kind of forced to go on this journey because she's like oh like i have to go like i gotta go figure out what's going wrong with my kid who's playing with me in order to sort of fix myself right mm-hmm. and go back to the way that things were and then her choice moment isn't the shoe, it's the box. It's when they're like, go back into the box and like everything will go back to normal. And she's like, mm, okay. okay. And then she goes into the box and then she's like, she has that moment where she's like, no, 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 no. Like, I can't do this. Like, I can't go back in the box. Like, I know too much, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I can't that do that. That was her Uncle Owen and Aunt Baru moment. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so I don't, so I, she does make choices and she is trying to figure out like who she is and it's that's why it's so relatable. Yeah. And like her experience changes her the most of anybody because she decides cuz everything basically if you think about it everything do- in Barbie Land does basically go back to normal except that the Kens have a little bit more sort of like equal like power in Barbie Land which is kind of funny cuz it's like it's playing with that idea of that like women are slowly making inroads and like getting slightly more power <laughs> yeah, and yeah. influence the, in our world, version, right? It's the yeah. mirrored version, right? Bar- like Barbie land is the bizarro version of the real world. Mm. Um, but Barbie does not choose to go back there. She is like, I want to be real. I want to be the person who comes up with the idea, not the object of the idea. Uh, I want to be the creator, not the creation. Yeah. And that's incredible incredibly powerful message but there was still like what we were talking about when we left the theater is like the fact that you don't really know what she wants like she doesn't know what she wants yeah and so that but that's such a weird that's again it's just like it goes against everything film where you're just like yeah you know what a character wants and that's how you identify with with them and she just doesn't have any of that yeah and so the reluctant protagonist the the non-desire so you're as you said to me I'm saying I agree with you 100%, but for some odd reason, this works. It works, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. so. like, it's still relatable. Right. Yeah. That's that's the, the <laughs> absolute just weird thing about this movie is that it breaks so many rules of writing, story, character, mm-hmm. filmmaking. Like, it is completely un... You cannot put this movie in a box. Yeah, like, yeah. like, if I, you try to explain to people what the hell this movie is, and it's like... Yeah, uh, yeah, it's you know? it, indescribable. And yeah. so it's it, fucking insane. But even with all of that, it still works. That movie has rapid tone shifts, which usually that's mm-hmm. like handled very poorly and clunky. And this movie, you're literally laughing out loud, and then you're crying the next minute, yeah. and it and it works. And I'm like, Greta Gerwig is a fucking wizard. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how she did <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah. She's it's great. it's incredible. Yeah, I would agree with like what was it eighty eight percent? I think that's that's a good score. I think there's the movies absolutely has some flaws in it. Yeah, but it is so fucking enjoyable. Yeah, and it's just it's just insane. We could talk about this movie like all day. Yeah, and and, like, and, and have so, different opinions about it. So going into the shit show of the, the of the theme, so a lot of the alt right crowd really kind of flipped the fuck out over the movie right. because it seems anti men and. I didn't get that from the movie. Yeah. But I do think the men are absolutely just fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? See, I, and, and, and I think that's fine. <laughs> I, I, I 100% agree with you. And I think it's not, it wasn't anti-men. It was anti-patriarchy. And I think this movie did a really good job of showing how the patriarchy isn't good for anybody. Men so, men or, or women. Because like, for me, yeah, as I was watching him, like, you know, Ken's in the real world and he's seeing all these things that are stereotypically like men. He goes and he brings that back to Barbie land and starts doing all these things like men are supposed to like this and this and this. And I'm like, I'm watching this movie. Like, I don't like any of that, but I'm still a man. Like, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, so it's, it's, you know, the idea of like patriarchy and like these gender roles and how there's, you know, quote, supposed to be like men are supposed to do this and women are supposed to do this, blah, blah, blah. And I think it did a good job of like kind of shining a light on that and be like, no, this is, this is not how it should be. Like, this is really kind of messed up. Like men don't need to like brewski beers and have them <laughs> and, you know, yeah. singing matchbox 20, like matchbox 20 <laughs> fucking sucks. Right. <laughs> so I mean, I, I, mean, I love I'm, that scene so much. It's so great. Like I, that's, that's the kind of what I took away from is it wasn't anti-men. It was anti-patriarchy yeah, and how, and yeah, how yeah. it's not good for anybody. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, and that was like, I, I had a conversation with somebody after where I, exp- I, you know, they were like, yeah, I don't know. It was a little too woke for me. Like I really didn't appreciate like how anti-man it was. And I'm just like, mm. and this was a woman by the way. And I was like, interesting. 
okay, counterpoint, this is what I think the movie was actually about. And she was like, oh, so huh, see, like see, I hadn't really s- thought of it that way. Yeah. You said that and and what you just said, the patriarch's not good for anybody. I don't think that message is very clear. I think that's mm. very muddled and lost in this movie. Mm. I think there's a lot of themes that are completely sure. lost. Like, I think there, there's so much going on and there's so many different things going on. And female empowerment is obviously the top right there, right? Right. But the, like, Will Fer- Ferrell's character is an absolute enigma. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't really add up because he's like, I want to put you in the box. I'm the I'm, I'm the head of the company. I have only men with me. I'm part of the patriarchy. But then he's like, so when the Ken doll, the Ken um, Mojo Dojo. Casa uh, House. Casa House starts selling really well. And you're like, oh, okay. So that's where that was going. And then he's like, no, we don't want that. Yeah. And so you're like, wait a minute. I thought you were a bad guy. And so it was just like it was that was kind of like confusing that those that there was there was one of those it was a theme that they were throwing in there that just didn't come across very well and it just got muddled and I think the patriarchy thing is to me gets muddled as well because I don't think it comes across that the patriarchy is bad for everybody it's for from the guy's perspective they were they were rocking and rolling like they were having the time of their life so what how did that how was that conveying that they were doing bad Right. Mm. And and so it was more of a message of we need to be equal. Right. 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 And and the movie at flat out rejects that at the end where they're like, can we have a man on the Supreme Court? And they're like, eh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll start see. with a lower circuit. court. Yeah, judge. exactly. So <laughs> yeah. It, it, it again, it's the mirror version where they're like yeah. men are slowly making their way through it. But I, and I keep beating this drum and I, I, I feel like I, I really need to. With my drumsticks. Um, <laughs> so, We're just having a little jam session here on the podcast. So, uh, I keep bringing this up, but I think one of the things that just really made me, cl- makes the movie click and make sense in my head is Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, uh, the TV show. Because there's a song in there called Let's Generalize About Men. And these are these are the, uh, the lyrics that I kind of pointed out. All men are emotionally stunted. When asked about how they feel, every man's always grunted. And why do men never listen and only think about themselves as opposed to women who always listen and never think about themselves? Let's generalize about men. Let's generalize about men. Let's get super lit and not admit that this is some kind of primal ritual we need now and then. So it's them just sitting there going like, oh, men are terrible because <laughs> they're just they're just feel frustrated and they're just like, let's just get this. We're just getting it out of our system. So like for the history of movies, they've been made by men yeah. for men. Mm. I mean, women are always kind of like then the object of ogling or uh, the pursuit or they're a reward, right? And of course, there are exceptions, especially recently, obviously. But by and large, that's movies are made were made by men for men. And so, why can't one movie just have really dumb men in it? Like and yeah. just be like th- these. They're, it's a movie they're beautiful. made by women for women. You mean? Yeah, exactly. Like these are beautiful and they're naive and they're just they're just arm candy, mm-hmm. stupid men. Movies have been doing that with women for the history of cinema. Why can't one movie just get away with yeah. that? Yeah. And then people are freaking out about it. Oh, it's so anti men It's like, who gives a shit? That's why I'm saying like, let's generalize about men makes it makes sense to yeah, my yeah. head because it's just like. We're just making fun of people like and this one movie is just going to throw men under the bus for a little bit because we have it coming <laughs> like we, yeah. and we can absolutely just be absolute the morons that we the men the Kens are in that movie. So you're saying that like all of the the sort of discussion of trying to justify the way the Kens are treated in that movie is like why like and I mean that that's interesting in and of itself because it's like yeah why do women have to apologize for being mad about dumb shit that men do and pointing it out yeah right <laughs> like why do we have to apologize for that yeah it, it's just crazy to me that people were just kind of flipping out and then like about that that particular thing about it's like. Yeah, you okay, then you're going to watch your next you're going to watch your favorite movies from the 80s where the women are all just prizes just, to be won. Yeah, yeah. and they're, yeah. they're naked and stuff like that. And so you watch one movie where the men are all dumb where and, flips and, that, yeah. yeah, and they're showing off their chests all the time yeah, like no, baby, oh, no. fucking this is fucking bullshit. Yeah. Like yeah. grow the fuck up. One movie where men have less power than Agency. women. Agency. Yeah. 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 That's a really good point. I really like that. I'm going to yeah. I'm going to use that now. I will say, though, going back to what you were saying about, like, oh, the men were doing just great when they had, like, patriarchy. 
yeah, on the on the surface, right? Yeah, absolutely. But, it's the surface. But yeah. I think that, you know, and it, it really only explored this with like Ryan Gosling's Ken for the most part, but like he still wasn't happy. Yeah. He didn't really have what he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I, I'm, you I'm know, not saying that that's, yeah. it, it, it didn't do that thing. I think it just, it gets lost. And if you're not, thinking about the movie and yeah. you're just the normie who goes into a movie and that that message of it was anti-men Men is kind it, of would make sense sure, sure. so it, you put yourself in an idiot brain like ben shapiro and and um all those other oh, alt-right no, pieces of shit like they don't they're not smart enough to know what nuance is yeah and so when they see see that like I can understand why they can make that argument because that message gets lost. Yeah, and- I I agree. I mean that and that makes sense and I think that just goes back to the like a, a problem with audiences in general that they <laughs> yeah. they don't understand they don't understand nuance. Yeah. I will say though that one of the other themes that I think is a little bit more subtle that maybe a lot of like men specifically didn't pick up on but I l- related a lot to it is the fact that she's she's a Barbie. And yet she doesn't feel like she's enough because there are yeah. multiple points in that movie where she says, oh, you, well, you know, you need you should go talk to like President Barbie or you should go talk mm-hmm. to like this Barbie or like the the Senate. Like, yeah, they're so like oh, all these Barbie, like, you know, she's like empower, you know, seeing all these like amazing Barbies around her and just like Barbies are so great. Mm-hmm. But she is just like, I'm just like, what can I do? I'm just stereotypical Barbie, mm-hmm. you know, and so she doesn't really to that point, right? She doesn't really have a purpose. She doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know yeah. what she wants. She is kind of a little bit of like a blank slate. Um, and so for, yeah, like that's why the the choice that she makes at the end to just start kind of going down that path of figuring out who she is is so powerful. The last thing I want to uh, point out is that, that there was a lot of people sitting there just bitching about like that it did this and did this and, and – um, even Dan Savage, even Dan Savage was like, I wish they they pointed out that like even uh, gay boys played with Barbies. Barbies, and right? It's just kind of like it, there was a lot of those kind of takes on it. And that's I kept a lot going of expectations going, for one movie. And I, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> it the movie can't be all things for all people. Yeah. Just like America Ferrera's speech. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't be, be all, all of these the things. things. Yeah. Like it just I find that very fascinating that that movie kind of turned into its own version of a woman, <laughs> right? right? Where people are projecting all of what they wanted, wanted. out of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. So. And it, it's like, it, can, it can't deliver. Yeah, you're right. It can't deliver on like all, it can't be all things for all people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I really hope they don't make a sequel. Uh, th- I, th- 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 there's no way you can get that lightning in the bottle again. Nope. Mm-hmm. Just nope. like the right. Lego movie. It'll be right. bad. It'll be bad if they make a sequel, but they're going to because it made a shit ton of money. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I just, I don't know how you can go back to that. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they do because, with, yeah, it's like with a property like Barbie, I feel like you know, it's not a one and done. Like, they're not just going to be like, we made one movie. It was gangbusters. It was like the most yeah. successful movie of all time. I and think, then we're just gonna hang up our hat and turn the lights off and call it a day. Like there's no way they're gonna do I that. I think I think if, if they're if they're smart, they won't they won't and then they'll focus on all those other random yeah. fucking movies. That <laughs> they, they gotta figure out what the hell to do with Uno. This Uno movie. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta crush it. Hot Wheels has to be like top notch. <laughs> I don't even know how they would do it. <laughs> We don't, again, we don't have to worry about it. Nope. We just have to talk about it later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> statistically, out of all those movies, at least one or two are going to yeah. be a shit show. <laughs> so. Some of them are never going to happen. Yeah. Okay. So do we have some follow up? Put away your drumsticks. <laughs> Put those away. <laughs> Follow up from the Cats episode at Brody said, this episode was the wrong episode to watch during work, but the best episode to watch during work at the same time. Love the pod. Clint should host an episode. <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> I, 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 re- I set you up for success. I know. Listen, I, I re-listened to that episode and I was the least funny, least interesting <laughs> one in that whole entire episode. Like, what any- does that have to do with, what do you mean? What? When we when we when we did cats, you know, and M- Melissa uh-huh. was our guest star, and I re-listened to it. You and you and Melissa were on fucking fire with like <laughs> research, banter, jokes, and I'm over here just being like, yeah, I watched it while I was inebriated. Like that's I was not. I don't think I was <laughs> okay, like. Okay, <laughs> to force the two thoughts there, so the that you should host. So 
they're saying you should host an episode. An episode. Like, like, like how I do how, it. How you do it, right, and sure. And how I set you up a year and a half ago to do it. <laughs> I know, and I still think and, about it And if time. anybody wants, uh, should I say, I'll just say it. If you want a Star Trek episode, Clint's going to be the one to do it. Everybody at Clint. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, all right. Because right. there's absolutely stuff to talk about. All right. Uh, you, 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 did gave, you did ask me to do that, and it, it's, it's, it's an overwhelming thought. It, seriously, it's just like I think about what you do and like the outline that you gave me, and I'm just like, I don't know how to fucking do this. Yeah, I like, don't know where to start. I don't know. What to, Once don't again, know. would just like to point out that Oppenheimer built an atomic bomb. So, <laughs> and had an affair. And had an affair. And had kids. And two kids. Yeah, and also portrayed by <laughs> Killian Murphy. I get fucking no. Shane West. <laughs> All right, listen, it's it is daunting. I no, but it's, I, it's I, definitely a lot of work. So like, I don't like. I'm just. I don't want to shame you into I'm not feeling you like either. you're I'm not just, enough. I'm you are saying. enough. Clint. I am Clint enough. <laughs> you are Clint enough. <laughs> I would like, it does sound like it's fun. It would be a lot of fun. <laughs> if Ian wants to do the research, then give it to me. I will absolutely just pretend that I did all this stuff. Like, I couldn't find that research. So like, you know, it was really this. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much, Brody. Thank you. All right. On the LXG episode, at Justin Stoll said, I was so furious you went on vacation, depriving us of more <laughs> shit shows. But then you said you were playing Zelda and forgave y'all. Yeah. yeah. Even okay. though that's also depriving you of more shit shows, technically. <laughs> Um, and then at Noe said, I want to commission a supercut of the shit show crew laughing. <laughs> okay. We'll have to go back through and find I, out. I don't know this. about that. I, it's funny. The I'd only probably episode... get way more annoying than you think. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, after about three minutes, you'd be like, oh, God. Wow. There was These so assholes. the only episode I re listened to of, of the podcast, the only one I ever go back to. I think I know. Is it Casino Royale? Yeah, it's the con- Quantum of Solace, oh, yeah, the Curse yeah, of yeah, Bond, Bond yeah. bit, because that gets so fucking funny and we're just losing our mind and we cut out a lot of our laughing oh yeah that. oh yeah like how much if you listen to it now how much we're giggling and laughing it was way longer oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was like this is kind of too much i have very strict rules about how much laughing at ourselves that we can include in an episode because <laughs> After a while, does it just feel like masturbatory? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. After a while, it's just like, well, we just seem like we're like, even though we're like legitimately having a good time and f- having fun and like laughing with each other, I'm just like, this is annoying to other people. And so yeah, like, I have it. a very yeah. specific like, and we're done. Like, and, and I'll done. just cut us off and then transition into the next thing. So anyway, a little bit of editing. Audio magic. Background <laughs> there. Yeah. Um, and then at Singing Pepper said, one time I was talking about Clint's closet and I called it Clit's closet. Now I can't say it right, though. <laughs> it's an entirely different closet. Yeah, it's a very different closet. Yeah. I think every woman has a Clit's closet. <laughs> different toys in there. Though. Well, I, I remember in high school, I was, I was <laughs> spoiler, uh, to no surprise to anybody, I was bullied. Uh, and, and it's okay. Oh, no, no. The cape. The it was cape. the cape. It was my cape and my, my Jedi robe. But uh, one guy decided that he wanted to bully me by calling me Clit. Mm. And I was, you know, a naive teenager, you know, that I was like, what the hell is a clip? <laughs> Eventually I found out what it was. And, I'm and like, where oh, it was. And no, no, and he still I hasn't was. found it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's stored in my closet. <laughs> I don't understand why it's not that hard to find. I don't understand. The, uh, listen, it's, just it's God. More, it's more of a joke of the fact that like men don't give a shit about women's pleasure. So it's not they don't know where it is. They just don't care. It's there. That's what it's it is. Fucking cans. Yeah, and listen, if you if you're curious about it, like just ask, just ask somebody. Just Google it. Don't, no, don't, don't do that. follow our. I mean, <laughs> we're not experts. We're not a sex ed podcast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, Clit's closet is a entirely different closet. <laughs> All right, coming soon. <laughs> oh, 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 worked on two levels. Oh. I mean, if you can find it. <laughs> can... Yeah, I'll hide the episode. <laughs> Separate link somewhere, <laughs> not descript. Uh. Okay, and I just got my trades in. Beep 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 beep. beep. This is this just in. We have a flipping through the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the new, newspaper. That was a good one. Imagine newspaper montage. Um, just got my trades in, and we have some hot hot gossip about some brand new meddling executives. Mm. So first up, we got Gareth, the director the, of Rogue the, One. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god he's what if that's what he's he's been in the meantime he's been sitting there just enjoying our content yeah. and he heard our episode he's like 
these folks are onto something. They, they get they get my indie hour. I yeah. I feel like these they got they got it. They got indie hour. How did they know that I call them coked out trailer boys <laughs> or tra- trailer bros? bros. <laughs> Gareth, Gareth is always a great time because you go to his house and it's always indie hour in Gareth's it's house. It's always <laughs> indie hour. Yeah. There's always, always cocaine. <laughs> There's always some great weird time. Uh, abstract movie being projected onto a wall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. His butlers are coming around with the trays of food, but instead of food, it's just lines of coke. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks Gareth yeah, for a yeah, great thanks, Gareth. time thanks, Gareth. every time yep. <laughs> thanks for meddling mm-hmm. uh, so the next meddling executive is none other, none other than the amazing Spider-Man the, the amazing, amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Man yeah yeah. he's just th- whipping his way into our Patreon and just th- whipping his way into cash and just sending it our way that we, was that know? was the most boring um, Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse is the one who's like an executive like, yeah. like, a, yeah. like a film executive business suit Spider-Man yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like guys I don't have time I have deals to close okay? mm-hmm. yeah. the portal opens and he's just like sitting at his desk like mm-hmm. pardon, pardon talking to other producers you yeah. get this movie made yeah. <laughs> he clo- closes uh, forces that like portal close I don't have time for this bullshit I don't have time for this multiverse bullshit. <laughs> I gotta worry about my own my own cinematic my own universe. universe. <laughs> because we don't really know who our the, our meddling executive is. We just know yeah. that he's a Spider Man. So if we go out and try to find a Peter Parker in yeah. the world, it will most likely be him. I think so. I yeah. yeah. Okay. I think cool. So. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right. We know your secret. Should we go to Facebook? Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We know your secret. Thanks for the money. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for the We just meddling. want to find you to give you a handshake, mm-hmm. Mr. B- business. Mr. Business, ba- business Mr. Spidey. Man. Business exec Spidey. Your Spidey senses would come in so handy if you were trying to close deals. You're just yeah. like, my Spidey senses are tingling. This is a great deal. Yeah. When They're the, chickening out. They're chickening out. They, tr- they, they tried to get him to do Empires of the Deep, and he had a full on migraine from his, from his spider <laughs> sense going senses. off. And like, no, absolutely not. Um, our next one is Christopher D. 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 That D. <laughs> <laughs> I heard. I heard he's the one behind the the Uno movie. Oh my god! <laughs> so we need to take him our ideas. I have. I have. I have so many thoughts. Well, that's I the have, thing with the. I have Moss than one Uno thought. Okay, about this movie. <laughs> Wow, killed him. Thank you. Spanish joke. Spanish joke. That's how you kill That's, that's, that's how you, how kill, you Clint. kill Clint. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that funny, but it was just like the way you delivered it. And like I had to I had I had a split second to think about it. It was like and it totally made Translate. sense. Translate. Like, yeah. yeah. Mas than Uno. Mas than idea. Uno. It's like it like it was a lightning to my brain. It's like that's hilarious. Oh my god. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that, that's the trouble though, like trying to talk to Christopher D about all of our different ideas about Uno is because mm-hmm. every house has a different rule. That's can you, true. You know, I want, that's probably going to be what the whole conflict is of this movie. It's just like, well, can no you, stacking, no reverse on a reverse, you know? <laughs> you oh my God. You can't, like, no, yeah, exactly. No stack. Can you stack? Can you not stack? What's the rules, Chris? Ooh, ooh. Like someone's like in a, in an Uno like competition and they're bringing and, and they have to like standardize the rules because like people are cheating with like weird <laughs> Uno rules. Yeah, and there's a rebel out there. Yeah. like, I do what I want with I, my Uno. I stack my skips. Like <laughs> what? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> that's what, what are the, the rules, Chris? That's, that's what the stub title is going to be. Uno stacking of the skips. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Stack it. <laughs> Stack it. <laughs> um, they have to make four of those movies, right? Because the fourth one's got to be called Draw Four. Yeah. Yes. Oh shit. Yeah. Well, what, but what are two and three called? Draw two, and then draw two. Uno three reverse. Wild. And, wild. Yeah, wild. Wild yeah. card, bitches. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, Christopher, please let us know yeah. the actual rules to Uno. Of well, the Uno. fifth one's got to be draw five, right? And the card, draw five card? No. 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 I don't know this movie. Don't ask me to write it. <laughs> <laughs> so Clint's not going to be a, a writer on the Uno movie. No. But um, yeah, uh, Chris D., you know, as you're meddling in various uh, movie affairs, please come to us for your for any Uno ideas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next we have Stephen S., who uh, is the world premiere expert on all things seagull related 
Oh my God. <laughs> Steven Seagal? Steven, 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 Steven Seagal? No, no, Steven oh, Seagal. Oh, okay. Steven, oh, totally okay. different. All right, totally totally different. different. Steven, Steven S. Seagal. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he has his own boat. He goes out and he studies these bastards. Mm-hmm. He's tagged every single every single Seagal. He knows them all by name. He's named them <laughs> Named them all. them all. Yeah. And they're all unique names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jerry, Steven. <laughs> Jerry too. Uh, Jerry too. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's how unique it is. <laughs> but yeah, no. If you have any questions about any seagull, he he knows he knows what it is. Is there a lot of money in seagulls? Well, yeah. Uh, when he's the only one who's doing it, yes. Oh, I Everyone's see. Everyone's coming to him. Cornered that seagull yeah, market. Yeah, he's cornered the seagull market exactly. Uh, and then yeah, and then he's able to take his uh, seagull cash mm. and and throw some our way. Okay, will he be able to explain why um, the state bird of Utah is the California gull? <laughs> no one can explain that. Yeah, he's still. That's 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 actually what a lot of his research is about right now. Yeah. Is trying to explain diving that. deep. Is he, into big, it. is he part of Big Seagull? Yeah, well, I know, I mean, he is Big Seagull. He is big big seagull. seagull. He's a big seagull. <laughs> It's literally, <laughs> literally a seagull, a big seagull. an anthropomorphic seagull, yeah. like the one in Tears of the Kingdom. Of, that's a, first of all. <laughs> He's a pelican. How dare you? Is he a pelican? Yeah, oh my God, he's a yes. pelican. Yeah. Isn't the pelican got the bigger, like, bigger beak that like, expands? Yeah, you can yeah. tell. Are you talking about your the friend who the like works at the paper with you? Yeah, yeah. absolutely a pelican. That is, is a, pelican? a fucking yeah, pelican. Come on. I don't know my fucking birds. That's why I gotta talk to Steven. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Stephen! We need you to we need you to come over here and set, set the, straight. The, on the, the one the one thing about Stephen though, the, the one thing about Stephen is all he can say is mine. Yep. Uh, of course. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's subtle nuances in everything. Yeah. yeah. That you can. Yeah. That's how he speaks. Yeah. Yeah. The inflection on the mine is how you understand. <laughs> you yep. know. Well, we're getting some of that seagull scratch headed our way. <laughs> Uh, Getting a big big seagull now sponsoring the podcast. So yep. thanks very much, Stephen. So our last one is Justin C, who actually taught everything Clint knows about improv. Yes. Oh my God, and. he's improv daddy. <laughs> <laughs> he was brilliant. At it. Great, great yeah. teacher. Did yeah. you did you just see that improv in action? Yeah. Yeah, Justin C. He uh, he sat me down and he said, "Now look, kid." You got potential. You can. What happened? <laughs> but he, but he was a lot more grubby. He's like, hey, all right, look, kid. Listen, listen, kid. Listen. <laughs> you got potential. He was sitting there smoking on that candy cigarette. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's just. It's just a prop cigarette I just found on the box, uh, you know, off stage. But you, uh, you've got potential. But you got, you got to just really learn how to say yes, <laughs> and. You gotta, you know, change the way that you look. And then he, uh, he, then he took the the candy cigarette and he he burned my arm with it. <laughs> and you're like, I don't even know how that worked. Yeah, was, that uh, that's how good he was at improv. Yeah, he made you believe in that cigarette was real so much. Yep. <laughs> and that when he put it on your skin, mm-hmm. your brain was like, that's actually burning that my burns. skin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you would think that like with somebody who's got these improv, at, you know, teaching chops and is actually throwing money at us for, you know, through a Patreon, that Ray would maybe want to take my class. I will never. <laughs> <laughs> I was born with an inherent skill for improv, so like I don't need to take your class. Oh yeah. Sorry, Justin Z. Yeah. See, you had you had it. I just had potential. <laughs> That's, yeah. 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 Exactly. She's like, I, there's nothing I can teach you, kid. <laughs> you know too much. You got something to teach me too. Yo. <laughs> Now this other guy, uh, <laughs> diamond in the rough, that one. Yeah. <laughs> She's a pearl before swine. You know? Her improv <laughs> skills are just through the roof, and uh, I can't, I can't teach that. I tried to bottle it, I couldn't do it. Yeah, I wanted to harness it. <laughs> I, tried, I tried to harness it like the power of the sun in my palm of my hand, but she was just too bright and just burned me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Clint, you suck. Burn, sick burn. Call the burn ward. You're nothing like Jenny Ray. <laughs> <laughs> this is my new favorite character. Oh, I love it. The, the, the grizzled improv instructor. He's seen. He's seen some shit. I've seen. I'm see, I've seen some things. Yeah. One time, someone said no on stage, and the 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 and it worked. It, somehow it did, but then. Uh, they tried it again next month uh, at our other show, and the audience just burned the theater down. <laughs> With their fake, their fake fire. I don't know why we handed out fake cigarettes, but it, we did, and it, 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 they burned it down. Uh, all, right. all right. Well, thank you all. <laughs> thank you to all of our brand new meddling executives for. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome <laughs> for meddling in our on, in our business and for giving us all 
the, the, the seagull scratch, the seagull scratch <laughs> the that seagull it takes scratch, to keep baby. to keep this show going. Yes, thank you, everybody. Bye, Barbie. <laughs> Bye, Barbie. Bye, Barbie. <laughs>